This could possibly be one of the most unorthodox methods of building a mountain, but uh, maybe a little amateurish, I don't know, but I'm just kind of piecing this thing together right now with some whiteboard and some florist foam block blocks. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to uh, fill some of this in with uh, balls of paper and uh, glue those into place. Basically these right now are just more for structure because I plan on this whole mountain being removable just in case I need to get to the track to clean it or possibly rescue a car that has fallen over. So I don't know exactly how high I'm going to go with this yet. I don't really have a whole ton of room here. It's probably, you know, I don't know, maybe three inches at most right here between the, the wall and uh, where the previous uh, stuff that I made here was done, this, this uh, elevation that I did right here. So a little bit of the stonework is going to overhang this slightly. Um, which is fine. You ever look at photographs of some of these railroads that go, the track goes along a mountain or something like that, you'll see that that stone is usually fairly close to the to the uh, track there, which is really kind of surprising sometimes how close it is. So uh, as long as I'm close enough to not cause any problems, especially around curves and stuff like that, I should be fine. Um, I've kind of given it kind of a rough cut uh, of kind of where I think I want to go with it for right now. Uh, I've glued the tunnel portals onto some blocks of foam back here and then I attached the uh, whiteboard which I just got this at Dollar Tree, a dollar a piece which is really cheap, about the cheapest I've found for whiteboard uh, and just kind of cut it, roughly cut it, nothing perfect and just hot glued it to the foam and then to itself over here to kind of give it some rigidity. Uh, the foam blocks again are for more rigidity also. <clears throat> this might not look terribly impressive right now and it might not look very good but once I get the paper on there to build the uh, mountain up a little bit and then cover it with some plaster cloth is what I'm thinking about doing on this one uh, it's gonna look pretty nice so I'm thinking probably going to build the stonework up somewhat up to here and then further up is just going to be grass and trees, which I've already got some trees uh, bought for this. I don't know if I have enough yet, but we'll see. This mountain, I think I'm gonna do a little bit more work to this eventually. This mountain I built with some scrap foam board, blue foam board, and then some um, cardboard along the back side there. And I built it into place just like I'm doing with the other mountain over there. Uh, and once I had the structure built, uh, I covered it with some window screen and then just uh, spray foamed the whole thing. And I went over it with some glue and some sand to give it kind of a rough texture there. And then went ahead and painted the whole thing. Some of it was painted with a spray can, some of it was hand painted in places. Uh, and then I also went through the tunnel portals and blackened those up a little bit where smoke and stuff would have uh, dirtied those up as locomotives come in and out of those. Um, might be a little excessive, but they can get pretty dirty though. Um, I also went up the rock a little bit because I figured, well, it'd probably collect on the stone face a little bit there. Some of the things I want to do this, I, I think I need to add more trees to it. It's a little bit bare. These are just cheap Chinese trees. I think there were 40 trees for 10 bucks. Uh, and they're really not bad trees for what they are. Um, I would like to add a little bit better trees to it, though I'll leave these trees in place. I like to add some better woodland scenics and maybe some of the, some of the uh, more professionally made trees that I've found that are not too expensive. Um, but these little, these little Chinese trees are really not too bad. These little Chinese trees really don't look too bad considering they're nothing more than twisted wire that's been painted and then the tree material has been added to the top of them. Uh, these ones over here are obviously a little bit different shade, a little bit lighter yellow, lighter green, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to start adding the balls of paper to this thing, and we'll come back in just a second. So we're continues on the makeshift mountain here, and I went ahead and created some, wadded up some balls of blue um, background right here that I had left over. Just used the rest of it up that I had around in here. And I went ahead and sprayed over that in places with some of this spray foam, which worked excellent for this. 
This is not, however, going to be the top coat to the mountain. I'm going to go ahead and apply some plaster cloth to this. And I still need to go ahead and uh, apply a little bit of plaster on the top of this foam here, the seat foam that I hot glued to the whiteboard. I got a gap to fill in right there. But I'm not going to worry about that because the plaster cloth, I'm going to probably drape down to the top of the foam right here and then go ahead and start to plaster the surface of that. And I think it's going to turn out really good, a combination of all this stuff. I still haven't decided yet how high I'm going to go with this. Might go a little bit higher and a little bit flatter. The remaining wall board, white board that's there, um, I'm going to have to trim that back a little bit probably. Or maybe I'm going to apply some pictures of trees back in there to kind of give it a little bit more depth, but uh, eh, we'll see. Now that my plaster mixture has started to hard up, harden up here, go ahead and create some random rock and stone formations here in the plaster, just to kind of give it a little bit of a variation of the stone here, and make it look like some of them are kind of crumpled together here. Yeah, that's starting to look beautiful. So I've broken up the bits of unused plaster here. And I've got some really nice chunks here. I look quite good as individual stones, so I'm just going to go ahead and place a few of them up here in the mountain here. Go ahead and wet the surface down here a little bit. Just to kind of adhere the two pieces together a little bit while both surfaces are still a little bit soft there. There we go. OK, 
another one will look good right here. There we go. Well, I'm starting to come down to the home stretch on the mountain building here. We've got quite a bit of painting and detailing done on it so far. See, it's looking quite nice. It's pretty dang good so far. Still got a little bit more painting to do on it, but uh, this is a good, definitely a good start anyway. You can see that foam, that seat foam that I used down there with some. Uh, 
plaster smeared on top of it. That turned out quite nice too. Definitely a good way to make a rock, stone, whatever you want to call it, wall there. And there are a couple places that the plaster cracked as I was applying the paint and the water and stuff like that. But uh, I think that just adds a little bit of character to it and kind of natural that you'd see in stone to see cracks and crevices and things like that. But that's okay. I might touch them up a little bit with some plaster, but I don't know. I might just go ahead and leave them. But we're making pretty good progress here. Still got to go ahead and do a little bit more painting. I want to add a little bit of yellow in some places to the rock there add some trees and then finish those uh, tunnel portals up but uh, so far it's coming along quite nicely there So it's been about a year since I shot all that footage and I just didn't get around to editing it all together. So here it is, a year later, and this is what we've ended up with. Unfortunately in that time period, it has the plaster that I put on there has decided to crack itself a little bit more. It's been shrinking over time here and I'm going to have to address that at some point. Um, I probably have to go ahead and put another coat of plaster on that. The coat of plaster that I put on here was, well, unfortunately it was probably a little bit thinner than it should have been. You can see one there. I guess that's kind of like uh, real rocks do anyway, but uh, I like how the painting, the painting job I did turned out. I have added trees since then, a little bit of grass. These were just kind of more test trees than anything. And uh, some of those little woodland scenic rock things, uh, these little large talus rocks, I kind of uh, glued those into place there in some areas. And uh, those are woodland scenic pine trees. I got those at Hobby Lobby on sale for $6.99, or $6.59, I guess. I only got five of them, but I got those more for a test. But uh, yeah, this is this is where we're at, and I started thinking about something. You know, my parents both watch my videos. Hi, mom and dad. <laughs> uh, but you know, my mom said something to me. A while ago my videos kind of reminded her of Bob Ross and if you don't know Bob Ross is a, or was a painter and he had a TV show on PBS and they're still on PBS actually his old shows but he said something kind of interesting that uh, does follow through with layout building pretty well uh, he said that you have to stand back and look at the piece, take a break from the piece and look at it and just let it speak to you. And that'll kind of tell you what you need to do next and, and something like this is definitely a good example of that. Uh, I had to step back for even a week or two just kind of look at it and see you know where things, I'd, things should be, where I'd like to have them. You know I added some, this is actually real dirt up here that I glued down the top layer of the mountain there and some more of that ballasting. I'm planning on putting trees up here eventually. I'll probably, what I, what reason I stopped is because I'm going to have to put, I'm going to put a, a photo backdrop back here and what this is to represent in my mind anyway is the three-dimensional bottom half or bottom portion of the mountain and then it's going to be a picture of some sort back here with trees and then the mountains going to extend up into the into the sky there that's that's kind of the idea behind 
this whole thing right here. So <clears throat> because of my space limitations, that's really all I could do. Um, unfortunately, I haven't finished this area yet or the other side. Um, but uh, I needed to finish the ballasting of the track around here first. So that's that's pretty much done around this area. And uh, I started a little bit of this over here. I still need to cut that foam out and stuff, but uh, I haven't tried actually removing the mountain yet. Mainly because I haven't needed to. But you've seen this in some of my few of my earlier videos, and I just finally got around to piecing this all together. But uh, yeah, I like the I like the way it turned out. It's uh, you know, it's just basically nothing but foam and hot glue and some plaster cloth. That's really all this is. And some $1 bottle of acrylic paints. And, yeah, I think it did pretty good. So, you know, you don't need to spend a lot of money to create something like this. You know, a package of seat foam at Hobby Lobby, I think, was like 8 or 10 bucks, And I didn't even use most of it to create this right here and once you put plaster on top of it it it's it's hard I mean it's 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 not gonna go anywhere so yeah and I have run locomotives across here and stuff and they work fine I like this this ledge effect that that the top of that uh, foam created and it's, it's a really nice realistic texture too that it created you know I just smeared lightly smeared plaster over it, just enough to harden that up that surface up a little bit and that's all I did to that so yeah that, that turned out pretty good yeah this is this is stuff this plastering stuff I need to do that a little bit better down in here but uh, yeah I think that turned out pretty good so until next time thanks for watching and I hope to see you again really shortly <sighs> this was a lot of fun. But, um, if you're wondering how much time this took, you know, probably about a couple weeks. And that's not necessarily working every night on it, but uh, just time to let things dry and stuff like that. Uh, something like this, I wouldn't mind having a waterfall on it, but that wouldn't be good to have... <laughs> Realistically, it wouldn't have you wouldn't have a waterfall right under a train track unless there's some kind of a torrential downpour or something that happens. But uh, yeah, anyway, I'm rambling. So take care, everyone. Peace out.